Welcome to Downtown Sports. My name is Downtown Stephen Brown, and in today's video, the Toronto Maple Leafs finally made a selection in the 2021 NHL Entry Draft. And I'm not going to pretend that these glasses have somehow uh, like future insight to all the prospects. And yeah, I've seen every game that all these guys have played and everything. No, this is the first that I'm hearing of this player, just like many of you are. But being a journalism student, research is my best friend. So I read over a bunch of scouting reports, some numbers, some data, some opinions. Let's see what those say. First up, if we're just looking at the elite prospects profile here, he is 18 years of age right now, but his birthday is October 17th, 2002. So he will be 19. So he is one of the older players that is available in this year's draft. Six foot three, 205 pound center winger, more than likely a winger. But going over the elite prospects, his scouting report here, the way Nyes establishes body positioning drives his value in every dimension of the game. He tries to be first on every puck at all costs, getting his leg in front of his opponents, then coming across their body with his hips to seal off the defender. Some off-puck awareness makes Nyes a bit of a scoring threat, hunting space after passing. And the direct comparison that everyone makes is, hey, new Zach Hyman. He played for the USHL the last couple of seasons, and he is committed to play at the University of Minnesota. So um, when we will see this player, possibly for the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, more than likely not until uh, two, three, four years down the line. Also something to note that the Maple Leafs did hire Ryan Hardy to be the general manager of the Toronto Marlies and to be really at the forefront of player development. And Hardy spent a lot of time in the USHL with the Chicago Steel. Um, which is the league that Matthew Nice played in, where his team went 116, 39, 8, and 2 in 165 games, and he won General Manager of the Year a couple of times there. I imagine that he saw Matthew Nice play at least a couple of hockey games. More from the Elite Prospects profile here projectable NHL skating depth, knees over toes, hips engaged, chest up, and puck control allow him to beat and occasionally deceive mobile and confident defenders along the boards and there was a chart there with a bunch of percentiles but why not hear the person that collected the data and what they have to say about the chart matthew nice is an interesting pick for toronto banking on the skating posture handling form off puck instincts to translate into better offense at the next level right now he's a dump and chase player with an ability to create off of retrievals just sounds like zach hyman one of the best puck protectors in the class and then he also notes here, he's probably a better defensive player than the results here suggest. Uh, there's more than likely some variance in the data, and he doesn't really capture what goes on um, away from the puck defensively. Just an absolute entry, exit, retrieval monster. The Zach Hyman comparison really is alive and well. And if you're looking at the Maple Leafs' roster and their organizational prospect depth, they don't necessarily have a player like this. So to add one in here in the second round um, is a pretty good get. And if we're looking at Jay Fresh Hockey's prospect card here, Matthew Nice does have a pretty good chance in his eyes or the data's eyes uh, to have a good shot at playing 200 NHL games, which is what this number is trying to predict. They're giving him a 50% chance based on past comparables and his data, uh, players that have graduated from the leagues that he's played in and put up similar numbers. They're giving him a 50% chance to play at least 200 games in the NHL. And then they also sign here a projected chance of becoming a star, but there's many variables and factors at play there. This from the hockey writers here, there's a lot to like about Niza's game. He has outstanding creativity and puck handling skills. He will try almost anything if there's a chance that he'll either end up with the puck or create enough space to move it to a teammate. Although... The Storm were eliminated early in the playoffs, which is perfect, man. He'll fit right in. Nyes led the team with four points in three games. He's also great at using his size to protect the puck, and he'll often go to the corners or be in traffic fighting for it. There's a reckless determination to his game that can lead to great scoring chances like the one shown below. And I like this because they also talked about him playing on the penalty kill here with the Tri-City Storm in the USHL, which is, you know, Zach Hyman played a lot on the penalty kill. And they also noted that his creativity is nice, but it also may be his downfall as sometimes he tries to force plays and, and ends up in a turnover. So maybe the Maple Leafs want to try to simplify things for him, play him with line mates where he doesn't necessarily have to force things, right? He can defer to them to maybe make those plays. And that's big, right? Even for a guy like Zach Hyman, playing with uh, Tavares and Marner the one season or Matthews or Nylander or Matthews or Marner, uh, this past season, 
Um, you want to try to simplify the game for him and allow him to be as true to himself as possible. And that's him just being an absolute fiend on the entry, the exits, and the retrievals. But this guy's not just an entry, exit, retrieval machine. He also does generate a fair bit of offense. And at his current age in the league that he plays in, PNHLE, which is a predictive stat, um, is kind of penciling his production in and around like a bottom end second line player. So a middle six winger. I like reading multiple of these prospect profiles because you get to see the overlap and the differences in them. And Dauber Prospect kind of takes a different approach on this player. Nice is an offensively skilled forward with crafty hands, but tends to get overly creative and cause turnovers with the puck. Okay, that's second part we've read over before. Uh, this could be an issue at the next level. If he learns to make simpler moves, he could improve his draft stock as he would be less likely to turn the puck over. He has strong vision and passing abilities, getting the puck to dangerous areas of the ice. Nice also has a very accurate shot that can beat a lot of goaltenders. He displays decent skating, skating skills with average first step acceleration, but he does have the ability to win foot races to pucks from time to time. Defensively, he needs a little more work. He maintains good positioning and has an active stick, but he could get involved more physically. Now, I don't know if January 9th, 2021 was the last time that this scouting report was updated here, but if that is the case, it kind of glances over this past season for the player. We saw that he does have decent offensive numbers in the stats that he put up with the Tri-City Storm and in his projected NHL expectancy numbers, but this scouting report kind of says defensively he needs a little bit more work, he could be a little bit more physical in the play, but he is a skilled forward with crafty hands, and they also mentioned that sometimes he tries to be a little bit too creative and that leads to turnovers. Because if we come back to the elite prospect profile here, the report says that he is physical. He does use his size. He does use his skating ability to get body positioning. He does go into the corners. So maybe throughout the 2021 season, he maintained his offensive production if we're looking at the numbers here, but he was able to improve parts of his game where the Dauber prospect profile said that he was lacking. But both reports did say that simplifying his game uh, could be really useful for this player moving forward. And what better way to do that um, with the Toronto Maple Leafs eventually um, if he does get a chance to play in the NHL with guys like Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Nylander. Now, with him being two, three, maybe four years away, a lot of those guys are only signed for the next three or four seasons. So, hmm. Which is a perfect demonstration on why you always draft the best player available and not... Um, for positional needs because your team two three four years from now is not going to be the same as what it is now opportunities to get players um, there's going to be several two three four years down the line um, you always draft for the best player available and you sort that out afterwards but definitely in a player like Matthew Nyes I think that the Leafs get um, maybe not the best player available because I did see some people suggesting that oh the Leafs should have taken this guy they should have taken that guy but they do get one of the best players available while also addressing an organizational need and you know something that's not exactly plentiful in the NHL right now now the Leafs don't pick again until pick number 153 in the fifth round and then they have one more sixth and that's it they don't have very many draft picks this year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this video now and then I'll upload like a news and notes kind of update sort of video tomorrow um, after the draft is kind of cooled. Maybe we'll get some more news on free agents, hopefully, and I'll highlight those prospects there. So I guess that's going to be it for this video, guys. Make sure to like the video if you did like and subscribe for more because more is always on the way. Guys, let me know how you're feeling D down, down in the comment section, not necessarily about the Leafs and stuff like that, but let me know how you guys are feeling in general, if there's anything new going on with you and stuff like that, I like checking in with you guys from time to time when I can.